I'm on a stretch of the River Thames foreshore where once upon a time stood one of the most impressive buildings on the waterfront of the River Thames. Thames foreshore at the site of Baynard's Castle. Baynard's Castle was built around 1067 by someone called Rolf Baynard, who apparently fought with William the Conqueror. The building had a Norman structure, a Romanesque architecture developed in the Normandy and England in the 11th and 12th century, maybe not too dissimilar to the Tower of London. Baynard's Castle was demolished in the late 13th century later rebuilt in the reign of King Edward II as a luxury residence. Baynard's castle was destroyed by fire in 1428 but subsequently rebuilt by the Duke of Gloucester, the youngest brother of the King Henry V. Baynard's castle was passed on to King Henry VI, King Richard III and eventually to Henry Tudor, King Henry VII, who in 1501 transformed the castle into a royal residence. In 1666, in the Great Fire of London, Baynard's castle was destroyed by fire and never rebuilt again. Here we see a typical stretch of the Thames foreshore with lots of random bits of pottery and brick and glass. A piece of brick with a name, maybe Brook or Brock, name of the maker. Uh, bits of refined earthenware, these will be late Georgian or Victorian. They look like jug handles. A bit of post-medieval redware. Uh, this can date anywhere from the 16th to the 19th centuries. So it could be contemporaneous with the use of the castle. A bit of Sunderland type slipware. This dates from 1800 to 1900. Uh, part of a base from a jug, probably Victorian. Another bit of post-medieval redware. Part of a tile, uh, indicative by the hole, one of two, punched in it. Maybe a part of a floor tile, possibly. Uh, sugar cone mould with a white slip on the inside. Uh, stoneware base, probably Victorian, maybe 18th century at the earliest. A shell. Another bit of post-medieval redware. Looks like a cooking pot, it seems quite sooted. And another bit of Sunderland type slipware. Clay pipe stems, found very frequently. A selection of clay pipes, stems and bowls from the period before the Great Fire of London in 1666. Pipes of clay were first smoked in England after the introduction of tobacco from Virginia in the USA around 1580 during the reign of Queen Elizabeth I. The Earl of Pembroke who owned the castle entertained the Queen on several occasions at Baynard's Castle. Only the rich and the wealthy could afford tobacco in those days. They were luxury expensive in the 16th century. 
The size of the bowl gives an approximate date to the clay pipe. The smallest the bowl, the earlier the pipe. In the early 1600s, more precise in 1620s, tobacco became less expensive and the clay pipe bowls changed in sizes as more people could afford tobacco in those days. Now this piece of post-medieval redware has a grey core, which indicates it's probably earlier. Uh, a Tudor date would be um, suitable for this, um, so that would be late 15th or 16th centuries. It ties in nicely with the castle. Lots more bricks. The detritus of centuries. Uh, it's an interesting piece of pottery, quite coarse, so probably late medieval or Tudor in date, I would think. Again, it seems to have quite a grey core to it. I think it's pottery rather than tile, it seems to have a curve to it. A little bit of blue and white decorated pottery. Now this piece is borderware, so this dates from 1550 to 1700. Lots of bits of pottery. And there's a bit of post-medieval redware, uh, probably used in the kitchen as it's sooted on the outside but not on the inside. So this will date from the 16th right through to the 19th century, difficult to be sure, but probably earlier when people were cooking uh, on fires rather than on ranges. Uh, typical Victorian jug handles, bits of tile, a little bit of slipware, might be from a tile or a pot. Another bit of post-medieval redware glazed on the inside to contain liquids used in the kitchen probably, a bit of tile. I found this baton at the site of Baynard's castle and my initial thought was it could be a Tudor button because the middle bit, the metal bit, looked very gold or goldish. The metal appeared to be gold. I took it home and left it in soaking water for a few weeks until my next visit to the Museum of London to show it to the fine liaison officer. As the object dried out, the metal changed colour, indicating it wasn't gold after all, for my disappointment but still a very nice find. A few buttons here also found at the site 
different style. These are from the medieval period through Tudor up to post-medieval period. They are copper alloy three-piece style by convex. Also copper alloy one-piece globular with circular shank. They were quite popular in the 1500s, dated approximately 1300s to 1700s. Hello, so we're looking at Barnard's Castle, one of London's more interesting historical sites. Um, first built as a castle um, in the 11th century and demolished um, by King John in the early 13th uh, and then rebuilt in a later medieval style um, and also used in the post medieval period until its destruction in the Great Fire. So none of the objects that I'm going to show you were found near the castle, but they're exactly like the sort of material culture that you would have found in a high status building like Barnard's Castle. Um, in the early period, um, they would have used very humble pottery like this greyware. Uh, this is a jug handle that's just had some thumbing on it. Um, and they also would have had uh, pottery with obvious inclusions with shell mixed in that's got some thumbing decoration on it uh, and that's another bit of shell tempered early medieval pottery so these would have been um, from about 1050 to 1150 1200 so when the first castle was uh, in use um, then later on in the um, 14th century onwards, they would have used typically Surrey whitewares, so green glazed, often with a mottled green copper glaze, uh, and stabbed and slashed handles on this very nice jug or cistern handle. Thumbed bases, um, but essentially the clay with obvious inclusions. You can just see the black uh, grits there that were left in the clay in the medieval period. Um, this would have been normal kitchen wares um, that could have been used serving at table. Um, also, um, Tiles would have been appropriate for a royal residence or a castle, a high status building. So we have Westminster tiles. Uh, this one is a heraldic tile with a lion crest on it. Uh, this will date from the middle of the 13th century. And then later in the 14th century, we get uh, nice floor tiles, encaustic floor tiles, pen, st pen style tiles. A bit of a tongue twister that is, isn't it? Uh, named after Penn in Buckinghamshire, uh, and these would have been floor tiles used in one of London's high status buildings, um, just like Barnard's Castle would have been.
Here is one of my favourite finds from the River Thames foreshore. Tiles, pentiles, as Richard Henry uh, described earlier. These ones here are the only ones I have, but this particular one here was found at the site of Baynard's Castle. So was this one next here. My only hope is that they were both from the Baynard's Castle building in those days. They are one of my very favourite finds. I only wish I had more of them, but they are not as common finds on the Thames for sure. So I'm quite lucky I have these ones here. Westminster Abbey and Winchester Cathedral both have a very large and very well preserved display of these tiles. Moving on then, uh, towards the end of the medieval period, from about 1400 onwards in the 15th century, they would have had imports of German stoneware jugs, like this little one here uh, from Siegberg. Uh, individual drinking taking over from communal drinking. Uh, and then in the post-medieval period, high status buildings would have had stove tiles. Uh, so it's an enclosed stove that is stoked from outside the room and would have had lovely uh, earthenware tiles with glazing on it. Uh, so that's that way up actually, isn't it? Because that's the head of an animal from a crest. Um, and those would have been used in the Tudor period uh, and the early Stuart period as well. Um, as for pottery, uh, we have London region slipped redwares there, nice big handle there, with the white slip underneath a green glaze to try and make the red clay look more like white clay. Uh, and a whole range of post-medieval redwares, uh, the ones with the grey core, like the one you saw in Tobias's video, uh, would have been Tudor period 1480 to 1600 or thereabouts. Um, so very possibly used in the kitchens of some of London's larger buildings. Another interesting medieval artefact which I discovered on the Thames foreshore uh, is this, which is the nut from a crossbow. So you could imagine uh, crossbow wielding mercenaries on the ramparts of Barnard's Castle. So um, the string would have pulled back on the crossbow and hooked into there and then the trigger is attached to that and when you pull the trigger it releases your string and off your crossbow goes towards your enemies. Well I hope you've enjoyed that little walkthrough, the history of Barnard's Castle.